Welcome to the Active Filter series. This video is about the selection of components for the Salon Key Active Filter topology. I discovered a methodology for selecting resistor and capacitor values that, in my opinion, is very solid. Conventional component calculations yield capacitances that are rarely standard values. The nearest value is selected and the results are somewhat off target. The available values of capacitors are more coarsely spread than resistors. With this method, the two capacitors are designed with standard value components right off the start, and the resultant resistor values are selected to their closest standard value, which can be 1%. Let's begin with a conventional approach for Salon Key filter design. Recall the equations from the Salon Key analysis video for cutoff frequency and Q. Notice this cutoff frequency formula only contains R and C. Those are the values you can use if R1 equals R2 and C1 equals C2. This limits to Q to be only one half. While it is a very simple design approach, I would say more filters would require a higher Q. Because of that, the values of the two resistors cannot be the same, and the values of the two capacitors cannot be the same. A conventional approach is to use scaling factors on the resistor and capacitor values, where R1 is M multiplied by R, and R2 is R divided by M. C1 is N multiplied by C, and C2 is C divided by N. In the equation for Q, we can replace the values for R1, R2, C1, and C2 with their associated scaling factors. We can manipulate this to get an equation that relates the scaling factors to the desired Q. We get a few cancellations under the radical and get this. Factor out R over M and we get this nifty equation for Q. The approach is to set one of the scaling factors to an arbitrary value and use the equation to solve for the other. Let's look at the example design with a cutoff frequency of 20 kHz and a Q of 0.32. Rearrange the equation to solve for N. We will assume M is 1 and get N equals 0.64. There's something that really bothers me, and you see it often in textbooks and videos. Let R equal 1K. Well, why 1K? While it may be a convenient choice, it's not always practical, but let's roll with it. Rearrange the frequency equation to solve for C. We get 7.96 nanofarads. Now that we have R and C, we can apply the scaling factors. M is 1, so R is 1K and R2 is 1K. N times C gives us 5.09 nanofarads for C1. C divided by N gives us 12.44 nanofarads. We then select the closest value from the E12 series, which is 12 nanofarads for C1, and 4.7 nanofarads for C2. Let's assume both C1 and C2 are on the lower end of their allowed tolerance, or 90% of the standard value. Assume the resistors are 1% and have negligible effect on the answer. Plugging that into the frequency equation gives us an answer that's not very accurate, not only because the capacitors have a not so good tolerance, but also that the closest standard value is not on target with the calculated value. You can always pay more for tighter tolerance capacitors, but the approach I'm about to show to you eliminates the variance between a calculated value of capacitance versus a nominal standard value of capacitance. While doing some research, I found the website kennethkuhn.com. He's a retired professor from the University of Alabama in Birmingham. He wrote a paper about component selection for the Salon Key circuit. It's in the Frequency Filter section of the webpage for EE431 and EE531. 
There is an infinite set of resistor-capacitor combinations that are mathematically correct, but impractical to use. Let's take the example of an RC circuit with a time constant of one second. One possibility would be one milliohm and one thousand farads. Another possibility would be one teraohm and one picofarad. Both are completely impractical. We need good medium values. Consider determining the largest too small value for the resistor, say a factor of 1000, which would be 1 ohm and 1 farad. Still not good. Let's try another factor of 1000, which would be 1000 ohms and 1000 microfarad. Let's back off to 100 ohms and 10,000 microfarad and consider that the largest value that is too small. Now let's consider the smallest too large resistor. 10 mega ohms and 0.1 microfarad isn't too uncomfortable. Let's roll with 100 mega ohms and 0.01 microfarad. The geometric mean of 100 ohms and 100 mega ohms is 100 kilo ohms. That seems to be the just right value. You could go up and down by an order of magnitude and still be in the comfort zone. Most op-amp filter circuits are in the range between 0.1 Hz and 100 kHz. Capacitor values should be below 1 microfarad to avoid the use of polarized aluminum electrolytics and tantalums. The author of that paper declared the best median value of the resistor to be 4 times 10 to the 5th ohms per square root hertz and 4 times 10 to the minus 7 farads per square root hertz for the capacitor. These serve as a good starting point. Since available capacitor values are more coarsely spread than the resistors, choosing the capacitors first is usually the best approach. For the sol and key example, we will begin by defining the ratio of C2 to C1 using standard component values. The actual ratio of capacitances will probably be somewhat different than the original target, but that does not matter as the calculations for the resistances take this into account and produce the required result. We need the math to have an input of the C2 to C1 ratio and yield the ratio of R2 to R1. These ratios will be dependent on the damping ratio zeta. Recall the equation for the damping ratio from the sol and key analysis video. It will take a considerable amount of algebraic manipulation to rearrange this equation to input and output our desired ratios. So here we go. Choosing not to work with the radical, we square both sides. Pull C2 over C1 out as its own ratio, then expanding the numerator. Separate the fractions, and several cancellations occur. Divide the numerator and denominator by R1, then multiply both sides by R2 over R1. There are more cancellations, and we get this. Simplify the fractions and distribute C2 over C1 into the three fractions. Then subtract R2 over R1 times zeta squared from both sides. Factor out R2 over R1 from the two inside terms. That's a quadratic equation, so I'm rearranging it in power order. Here's our coefficients that we will insert into the quadratic equation and reduce the fraction. There's lots of simplification to do. Multiply this term by itself to square it using FOIL. Then place the result back in the radical. These like terms cancel and reduces to this. Factor out zeta squared inside the radical and move zeta squared out of the radical. And finally, multiply numerator and denominator by 2. At this point, we only know ratios. We can rearrange the frequency equation to solve for the product of R1 and R2. Here are our knowns, but the value of R1 and R2 independently are unknown. We need to develop the math for calculating R1 and R2. We need a way to relate the ratio 
of R2 over R1 to the product of R1 and R2. That is done by multiplying the ratio of R1 squared, then rearranging to solve for R1. Since we now have the value for R1 and the product of R1 and R2, we can easily solve for R2. Now we have all the equations we need to do the design. There are several important observations to make to restrict the ratio of C2 to C1. Look under the radical. To prevent a negative number in the radical, C2 over C1 must be less than or equal to zeta squared. That rearranged shows that C2 must be less than or equal to C1 times zeta squared. The main takeaway from this is that when zeta is less than 1, C1 is going to be higher than the geometric mean capacitance. And if zeta is greater than 1, C2 is going to be higher than the geometric mean capacitance. To make C1 go in the right direction, we will multiply the geometric capacitance by the reciprocal of zeta. Okay, let's design a Salen key low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 20 kilohertz and a Q of 2, which is a damping factor of 0.25. Establish the geometric mean of capacitance by dividing by the square root of the cutoff frequency. We need to make sure C1 doesn't round down to a standard value and make sure C2 doesn't round up to a standard value. So we can have a C1 upscale factor which can be tweaked to adjust the capacitor selections. I'm using 1.25 in this example and 0.75 for the C2 downscaling factor. Now let's calculate C1 which comes out to 14.14 nanofarads. I'll select an E24 series standard value of 15 nanofarads. C2 will be C1 times zeta squared, then times the C2 downscale factor. That yields 703 picofarads. I'll select an E24 series standard value of 680 picofarads. Now we can compute the C2 to C1 ratio, which comes out to 0 0.045333. Note that the exact ratio of C2 to C1 is not critical to obtain the desired Q. The resistors will be calculated to compensate for the off-target C2 to C1 ratio. Now using our nifty equation for the ratio of R2 to R1, we get 3.202. Now that we know the selected standard capacitor values, we can calculate the product of R1 and R2. Then R1 comes out to 1,392 ohms. The closest E96 1% value is 1,400 ohms. R2 comes out to 4,435 ohms. And the closest E96 1% value is 4,420 ohms. It's always a good idea to put the selected values back into the analytical equations to make sure there were no mistakes. For cutoff frequency, we get 20.0329 kilohertz. That's very close. And for zeta, we get 0.2491. In summary, I believe this is a very good methodology for selecting components. Having standard capacitor values be the beginning point for the resistor calculations makes so much sense. Notice that C1 wasn't too large and that C2 was well above any parasitic capacitance the circuit might have. The capacitor upscale and downscale factors are useful to tweak the results if the capacitors need even more adjustment. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.